Shalom. I'm Messianic Rabbi Zef Porat, and welcome to Biblical Hebrew Foundation. Today we're going to be looking at what is grace according to the written Word of God. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 2. Do not add to what I command you, and do not subtract from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord your God that I give you. Deuteronomy is the foreshadow. We, fe- we see the fulfillment in the book of Revelation chapter 22, verse 19. And if anyone takes away from the words of this book of prophecy, God will take away his share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this book. So we can see according to the written word of God, that God is not happy when people add or take off his word. With this understanding, let's have a look at some Bible passages in the New Testament in the Brit HaChadashah. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 to 5. It is actually reported that there is immorality among you, an immorality of such a kind as does not exist even among the Gentiles, that someone has his father's wife, and you have become arrogant and have not mourned instead, in order that the one who has done this deed might be removed from your midst. For I, on my part, though absent in body, but present in spirit, have already judged him who has so committed this, as though I were present. In the name of our Lord Jesus, Yeshua, when you are assembled, and I with you in spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus, Yeshua. I have decided to deliver such a one to Satan for the destruction of his flesh, that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus, Yeshua. While removed from their midst and even delivered over to Satan, Does that sound like grace to you? It must be according to the word of God, because that's what they were under. Let's have a look at the book of Acts, chapter 5, verses 1 to 10. Now a man named Ananus, together with his wife Shapira, also sold a piece of property. With his wife's full knowledge, he kept back part of the money for himself, but brought the rest and put it at the apostles' feet. Then Peter said, Ananus, How is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept for yourself some of the money you received for the land? Didn't it belong to you before it was sold? And after it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? What made you think of doing such a thing? You have not lied to men, but to God. When Ananias heard this, he fell down and died, and a great fear seized all who heard what had happened. Verse 7, about three hours later, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. Peter asked her, tell me, is this the price you and Ananus got for the land? Yes, she replied, that is the price. Peter said to her, how could you agree to test the spirit of the Lord? Look, the feet of the men who buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out also. At that moment, she fell down at his feet and died. Wow, Ananias and Sapphira, Shapira in Hebrew, his wife, lied to the church about the money they received for selling the land. Peter then told them, you were not lying to man, but lying to the Holy Spirit. And then they were struck dead. Does that sound like grace to you? It must be, because that's what they were under. Yaakov, James, chapter 5, verse 9. Don't grumble against each other, brothers, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Does that sound like grace to you? It must be, because that's what the Bible says. Galatians chapter 1, verse 9. As we have already said, so now I say it again. If anyone is preaching to you a gospel other than the one you have accepted, let him be eternally condemned. Eternally condemned. Does that sound like grace to you? It must be, because that's what we're under. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26 and 27. If we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of truth, no sacrifice for sins is left, but only a fearful expectation of judgment and raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. We continue to read verse 28 and 29. Anyone who rejected the law of Moses died without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much more severely do you think a man deserves to be punished who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, who has treated as an unholy thing the blood of the covenant that sanctified him, and who has insulted the Spirit of grace? 
Hebrews chapter 10, verse 30, For we know him who said, It is mine to avenge, I will repay, and again the Lord will judge his people. It is a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Wow, believers who are deliberately against the word of God will be consumed with the enemies of God. That's what the Bible says. Does that sound like grace to you? It must be, because that's what we're under. What is grace? That's a big question. Better yet, let's have a look at what grace is not. Jude, chapter 1, verse 4. For certain men whose condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. They are godless men who change the grace of our God into a license for immorality and deny Jesus, Yeshua, Christ, as our only sovereign Lord. Grace is not a license to sin, nor is it a license to overlook sin. Romans chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? What is grace? Grace is Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, who died on the cross for our sins, rose on the third day, and by his blood, if we repent and believe, we have full redemption of sins. The Bible says all of us have fallen short of the glory, but through him we become righteous. Through him we become priests, because he's our high priest. Yes, salvation was given to you and I as a free gift by grace, but the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach, the blood of Jesus, cannot be taken for granted. We must follow the written word of God in context, die in Messiah Yeshua daily, repent, and ask the Holy Spirit to fill us up and plead the blood of Yeshua, Jesus, upon our lives. Let's continue to stand together as the one new man preach the whole gospel from Genesis to Revelation, it's one book, and not abuse the grace that our Lord Yeshua HaMashiach shed for us in Jerusalem. Let's continue to stand together as the one new man, Ephesians 2.15, bring the gospel back to Yerushalayim, back to Jerusalem, and go home. Until next time, I'm Messianic Rabbi, Zef Porat, sending you blessings from Israel in the mighty name of the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, the line of the tribe of Judah, Jesus Yeshua. Amen.